hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Network's driving me mad. The Seven, just quickly, briefly, oh, introduce everyone. And what they mean to you? Come on, tell them. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. He, he helps me to train. Sometimes when I don't want to wake up, he, he comes up to my house and if I, if you ring my phone, he don't answer, I ring my doorbell. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. Tell us about your relationship with Dillian. No, Dillian's my bro. I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeves, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Three. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Okay, yeah. the voice of hardcore boxing, you know don't you, you know. Well it's that time of month where we had all the votes up and we do International Helmets of the Month. For this month, we're trying something different, I'm going to share the workload with my good pal Dale the Great from the Midlands, or is the black country down that area. I'm going to share the workload with him and he's going to deal with all the emails and all the votes and add it all up and a lot of other stuff behind the scenes, which leaves me time to get on with other stuff and other things. But uh, how are you doing, Dale? You I'm right? good, mate. How are you? I'm, all right, <laughs> I'm excited. Let me just get this helmet off my head. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> how you been keeping? All right. Yeah, it's been a while, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I remember not long ago, you were sat in that chair there, debating with very hot Stig about Fury Power! <laughs> and telling him that Tyson had uh, not made a defence of a belt. And that and was about a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about last July, and didn't yeah, uh, so did, yeah. didn't he say that he'd go on to beat Joe Lewis' record? <laughs> he said he'd go on to beat Joe Lewis' record, and uh, Tyson's still not defended the belt. Bless him. Probably due to the virus, but we wish him well. Right, international helmet. <clears throat> How did you feel about adding all that lot? There's a lot of work, isn't there? <laughs> Took a few <laughs> hours, so I have to say. Hey, it's like doing a shift out pit, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Mixed it up a bit, haven't we, this week? We, we've changed the format a little bit. So let's go straight in, balls deep, no messing about. Uh, who's number 30? It's the man himself, the YouTube sensation, Coogie Bear. Coogie Bear, number 30. What's he done to the number 30, girl? Oh, it's just the constant ribbing of Sky and Matchroom and the following of the narrative... You know, you go back four or five years when you, him and Elder had their, their show together on Box Nation. He used to be, you know, straight talking, straight down the line, and he'd give an honest opinion. But now, he's just like a puppet on the strings, isn't it? Do you think, Neil, that uh, that could be why uh, James Elder and him went in separate ways, do you think? Do you think that could be why, why, why they're not working together? I'm just getting the camera position ready. Do you think that could be that? Why they're not uh, together? I'm I mean, not sure. I mean, I, I, you hear rumours that you, I mean, didn't Helder get locked up for something? And, you know, there's a bits and bobs behind the scene. I mean, we've discussed it in private. We kind of know the reasons why, mm. but we couldn't be putting it out, out on the channel. Uh, I don't know why Joe, James Elder uh, turned into Tony Bellew overnight. He just disappeared, didn't he? Maybe Tony Bellion needs to take a leaf out of James Elder's book, doesn't he? And swallow some of that special invisible invisible man potion and just jog. Because, I don't know, but I feel for James Elder. But I see where you're coming from with Coogan, because 
he's become like the guy that they all want to put stuff out through. People are sending him Instagram videos that they're doing on their Instagram, one minute and two minute videos. They're sending them him. And I don't really think he wants to put them out on, on IFL. But I think he's built up such a relationship with these people that I feel that he feels that he has to. And I think he's now caught in the middle of being friends with some of these people and being a boxing media guy because he's a very good interviewer. He's very calm, very good behind the camera. In front of the camera, I don't think he's as confident. I don't think he is. I think he's all right behind the camera. It's, listen, it's very easy to sit behind the camera. You know, I get this here and I point this at you and I'm interviewing you and I'm like that. I can do that all day. But when you're in front of a camera, you've got to think, 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 think all the time. You've got to think on your feet and you've got to get it right. Now, I don't think he's confident enough to do that. But it's all, it's all, it's it's very easy to sit in front of Eddie Earn and interview him with a load of questions that Eddie Earn wants to answer. Who? I seriously think that Eddie Earn would be able to, or Eddie Hills, as we call him now, do you think he'd be able to answer questions from me or other other guys who really want to set about him? No, because we're not going to get the chance, are we? But moving on, we wish Coogan all the best. But yeah, I think we're just going to call him the Rimmer now, aren't we? Let's not call him Coogan. Let's just call him the Riminator. He's known as the Riminator. Now, all you hardcores refer to Coogan now as the Riminator. Right. In at number 29, Dale, who we got? It's David Diamante. Diamante. David Diamante, David Diamante right? A white man smoking a cigar, a big stoogie, pretending to be Shook Knight, and he's got dreads. Is that the same man? It, that is David Diamante, Diamante. Where did they dig him up from? You know what I'm going to refer to him as? The cock head. The guy's a cockhead. I've seen him. I don't like him. Let's move on. Who's number 28? It's everybody's favourite trainer, the master tactician, Adam Booth. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Booth. Go to Adam Booth. He's the best. <laughs> Can't slag Adam Booth off the top. What is he known as? PE teacher. The Dark Lord, get it right. The Dark Lord. <laughs> In at number 27, who we got, Dale? Jarrell Miller. So, we've seen numerous posts on social media of Jarrell Miller claiming that he failed two drugs tests due to Viagra. Jarrell Miller failed two dope tests due to Viagra. I, there's no there's no question for that, is it? The guy's roided out of his mind, has been years. He's the only 24-stone man that throws 125 punches around. But he's not on oh, Listen, he's a disgrace to box and he wants throwing out. Who's number 26? Matthew Macklin. <laughs> Lower than I thought he would be, but he's throwing? there. What's his nickname? Mac the Knife. The assistant company man. Tom Mac, the yeah. Mac the knife in your back. What's happened to Matthew Macklin in the last 12 months? I don't know, mate. You know what? I, I, was, I was a massive Matthew Macklin fan. You know what Matthew Macklin fought, right? Everybody were at the edge of the seats because he used to bring it, didn't he? He used to probably get stuck in. He got robbed in a world title fight against Stern. I feel sorry for him about that, but the bias from him is off the charts. It's off the charts. There's off the wall and there's off the charts. And he's both, mate. He's shocking. Matthew Macklin, resign now. Resign your position at Sky. Go now while you still can. Whatever money you've had from Sky, consider it severance pay. Take the train and get out of Dodge. I'll be disappointed in Matthew Macklin for the uh, Courtney fight because Matthew Macklin, he's a brummy through and through. And when he fought, uh, when 
Courtney fought Ball the other week. Well, Ball's a, like, a local lass, and I thought maybe he'll get behind her a little bit, but he couldn't get through his Sky narrative, could he? He couldn't get away from it, and he had to support the home fighter. Yeah, it's embarrassing from Matthew Macklin. He's embarrassing and shameful, isn't he? Shameful. All right, then. In at number 25, who we got? Floyd Mayweather. I know what this is for. Logan Paul, finally. Was it for the Logan Paul? How can a man 50 and 0 have a pay per view fight in Vegas against a man 0 and 1? One fight, one loss. And a man 50 and 0. Are they taking the Mickey out of fans? Is this now boxing in the 20th, in the 2020th era? In the 20s? Is this where we're heading? Hey? You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. Hopefully. Eh? No, no doubt the WBC would be willing to slap a title on the line for it as well. Slap a title on the line? <laughs> they all want slapping cuffs on them and put it in jail. <laughs> eh? Slap a title on the line? I mean, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, mate. It's totally and utterly embarrassing. It's gimpish behaviour from Gimp the Island, mate. That's what it is. It's gimp. It's a load of gimps sat round, sat round a, in, a, in a pub pretending to know a lot about boxing. It's totally shocking, mate. Totally and utterly shocking. There you go. I thought we'd change top. What do you reckon? That's for all you trolls out there that keep going on about me changing my tops. I like to keep clean, unlike you lot. So, who oh, we got at number... 24? It's Bob Aram. AKA the Bob Farmer. What's he, what's he been up to? So, he seems to be claiming that the new, the Allegiant Stadium in Vegas is going to be full before Christmas for Wilder Fury 3. Absolutely no chance of fans getting in stadiums. Well, what we've got at the moment, in my opinion... We've got a load of promoters paying lip service to fighters. I said this in March, and we're speaking to people. I'm not going to mention names. Trainers were ringing me up. Have you heard that? Have you heard that? I said, well, I've heard this. I've heard that. Well, we've been told May. Right now, I don't think it's going to happen. We get to May. Oh, we've been told uh, June. We've been told July. We're now going down the road of, we've been told October. Now they're being told December. But nobody knows what's happening, do they? It's all lies. They're all lying, they're paying lip service. They've got to keep themselves out there. Look, you see boxers every day. They're putting themselves out there on Instagram and social media, pouring themselves out because they've got to be in the mix. They have to have the fix. You've seen all these boxers and pundits, they've got to have their media fix, haven't they? Got to have it. No, we're not. No, we're not them. Bob Aaron's talking rubbish. Right. Moving on from the Bob Father. In at number 22, who we got, Dale? It's Shannon Courtney. Okay, Lady Beaver. And what's she been doing? Well, she went silent after the the loss, didn't she? And um, she then got, decided then then decided that she was going to do an exclusive interview, like she's this A list celebrity on IFL, and have it released on Mental Health Awareness Day or Suicide Prevention Day, whatever it was, because she's been suffering with mental health issues. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. So it was this big build up to, you know, this big massive interview on IFL and it just 
there was there was no recognition for the fact that she lost to a better fighter on the night. It was all about herself and how poor she was, not how good her, her opponent was. And this is the problem with these matching fighters now. He's they've sort of got tunnel vision. Yeah. They can't seem to see what's across the ring. I mean, we'll come on to obviously the main one later with White Povetkin, but all it ever is geared towards is the home fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she came out on IFL and did an interview a few weeks later, didn't she? Was it three weeks later? Yeah. And said, uh, I suffer from mental health and this and that, and today's mental health world suicide day and all that. In my opinion, right, I think she could have picked a better day to come out than that. But I, I think that's all for PR because nobody said anything about mental health when she signed that form an hour before she went into the ring. You see, what you presented with is a, you give me a big sheet like that. You sit there with your trainer and you go through it all. Tick, tick, tick yes or tick no to them all. They've all got to be more or less no's and to everything. They've got to tick the right box. So she's ticked. Have you got any mental health or health issues? Before you get in the ring, just tick no, right? All of a sudden, she fights the fight of her life. If she's told she's won, she's all right. She's told she's lost, so she goes dark mental health route. But saying the stock's gone up, look, a stock has gone up because it was a great fight. But the stock's only going to go up and stay up if she fights that same girl again and beats her. If she don't fight that girl again. She'll be known as the girl who swerved Rachel Ball. That's my opinion. That is my opinion, right? It was like two birds having a fight in a pub. Let's have it right. Yeah? We agree with that, don't we? But she's made you know of her talents, mixing her talents with social media and blah, blah, blah. But it's a turd polished up, in it? Let's have it right. But PR that they've had. She's had all that PR on IFL. We know why. It's a polished to Shannon. Shannon might be a nice lass. She might be a good little fighter and gutsy. I'd say she's gutsy. But if you put her skills next to Shannon Courtney, Savannah Marshalls, they don't get a look in them girls, do they? But they're like fighters, aren't they? They're not social media fighters. Do you see where I'm coming from? She's good to say. Oh, dear, you big horse! Shannon Courtney, she bought it at the end of the show! It really is garden with fireworks! Fuck off! With your fireworks in your back garden. I don't give a fuck. What does that mean? It's a great show and it's innovative. Dennis Hobson can put one in his garden if he wants, so any of them is big enough. You could put one at Jersey with sea background and jet skis and all that. I could do all that. <laughs> What's he going to do? Put a load of shite <laughs> We've got fireworks in the back garden. What does that mean? Would you rather see great fights in a studio or white collar fighters with a few fucking fireworks going up? Am I right? If I'm not right, let's talk about it for 20 minutes and I'll decide I'm fucking right. I know I'm right because I know the emails I get. You've seen them. Let's move on from her. I don't even want to give a fucking air tire. How she ended up in my list? I don't know. In at number 22, who we got? Well, she must have got the votes. She's had the votes, yeah, I've... but fucking hell, I wish you want to put her in. Who have we got at number 22? It's the rat. Sonny Edwards. <laughs> Apart from insulting Terry, Terry, my pal. <laughs> what's, what, what's Bugs Bunny been doing? <laughs> you've got, you've got the beard. You've got the beard. You've got the the stupid ponytail. Has he got a beard? And, then, and then you've got. How old is he? About twelve. He ain't got a beard, has he? He tried to grow one, didn't Bugs he? Bugs Bunny's got a beard. Oh my god! And then you've got the fact that he stunk the place out yet again. Has he got a knockout on his record yet? A, a knockout? What, what, what we would call a knockout? I don't think so. Right, moving on then. I don't want to give him airtime either, but he's had the votes, he's had the votes. In at number 21. 
Well, well, just a, just a note on Sonny. His last opponent, Thomas Asomba, actually lost to the guy that Charlie's fighting this weekend. Oh, did he? Lost to Carl Williams. That's interesting, isn't it? All right, then. Moving on from the rats or Bugs Bunny, whatever you want to call him. In at number 21. Isaac Lowe. As Isaac Lowe has been checking any English lessons yet and learning how to tweet properly and spell words correctly. Well, with a name like that, he's had plenty of practice, isn't he? Over the years. Are we talking Wait, about I... the same eyes that low as the bearded wonder with Matt, a bit of a beard here, a bit of a beard here? Can he fight? He's been in a few decent scraps. Who's his trainer? Well, he's he's been training with Tyson and Sugar Hill, isn't he? Running Ray Morecambe. Right. You've seen the videos. We've all seen the videos. Yeah. He's so far up Tyson's arse. Yeah. He'd yeah, struggle well, to make weight, wouldn't it? Tyson, isn't he? But this is how I look at it. Tyson's getting 30, 40 million a fight. Isaac Lowe's his best mate from the same area on the same undercard. But he's he's been getting less than 0.1% of that, has he? I don't know how to work that out. If you're, you're getting 40 million, 30 million a fight, and you've got somebody getting enough money to buy a Mondeo, and somebody getting enough money to buy 10 Bugattis. How's his mate? What's all that about? I don't get that, do you? How can you get what he's been getting and get what he's been getting and do the same camp together and travel around the world? Is that why you look after your mates? Well, he wouldn't be a, uh, wouldn't be able to afford a taxi from Vegas to New York, would he? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on then from Isaac Lowe. I think he was trained by Ben Davidson. He's had some news this week, can he? Ben Davidson. It, Billy Joe. He's with. Uh, uh, well, he's he's with. Uh, he's got Josh Tyler in he now. Well, so Tyson's left him. Billy Joe's left him, and Josh Taylor is he going to leave him? We'll see after Saturday, won't we? Are these undefeated world champion fighters sussing out Ben Davidson? What do you think to that? Shortcut to success. Yeah, there's no shortcuts to success in boxing, is there, mate? Moving on. In at number 20, who we got? Who we got? Dennis mate? Hobson. <laughs> Dennis Hobson. Dennis Hobson, number 20, a.k.a. Big Ron. <laughs> What's Big Ron been doing? <laughs> Drive through boxing. We'll just leave it at that. What? <laughs> he pitched the... Pitch the idea of drive through boxing. Big Ron's doing drive through boxing. You're having a laugh. Big Ron doing drive throughs. Where's he doing that at? Aldi on Strasbourg Estate, Sheffield or Wyburn Estate. Well, we wish Big Ron well. Big Ron is innovative, isn't he? He put Jamie McDonnell on uh, Doncaster Rovers ground, isn't he? 10,000 seats have sold 1,000 tickets. Big Ron will have a go. If there's money to be lost in boxing, Big Ron will throw it down the drain. But <laughs> drive through boxing, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, who's going to be patrolling car park in, in luminous vests and handing pie and peas out? Is it going to be Nicola and Michelle and Richard Towers? I don't know. I don't know how Big Ron's going to pull that off. Big Ron, I wish you all the best and overlooking the world with your drive-through uh, show with Tommy Frank and Kyle Youssef on. Two worlds collide. That's the good. Two continents collide. We could have come with for that, or we could have World War Three. Tommy Frank against Kyle Youssef. And who's Kyle Youssef managed by? Steffi Bull. Steffi Ball. How's that going to work? How's that going to work? Steffi Ball and Dennis. I don't know. I don't know. I'm shocked. But Big Ron's relevant. He's in at number 20. So he's he's still hanging in there, isn't he? He's, uh, maybe they could make it, if it's for a British title, that's brilliant. But if it isn't, 
because Car- uh, Tommy didn't want to fight him, did he, a bit back? If it's in for a British title, maybe they could make it for the WBC International Bronze, because they're bringing out a bronze, aren't they, now? The WBC International Bronze, Tommy Frank against Kyle Hewson. But it'd be a better fight for if it's for British. But I'd like to see it at Ponsford. I'd like to see him wait and not try anything daft with these drive-ins. But... Is Dennis paying lip service to Glyn Rhodes, Tommy Frank, Steffi Ball and Kyle Yusuf? Are they paying lip service to him to say, we've got some at bubbling? Are they paying lip service? And then if it doesn't happen, Dennis can go, well, virus. Is that what we're seeing now? Or is it genuinely, genuinely going to happen? I say no. But I hope it does because Dennis puts his heart and soul into things every night. When he's laid on settee, drinking red wine, eating balsamic vinegar crisps. So we wish him well. (laughs) You liked that one, didn't you? Right. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Uh, because we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs>